नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासारी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे समथिंग दैट वी नीड टू नो मोर अबाउट डीलिंग विथ सन्यासी सो एज सुन एज वी सी अ सन्यासी So you all know the difference between a brahmachari and a sanyasi. Yes. So brahmacharis they getting trained for sanyas order, and the sanyasis are the ones you know who uh, you you can recognize them by their attire that they wear. So they have a special uttri that they put in front of uh, you know on the neck, and one devotee was showing. We put it like this so that we can beg directly holding that. So they put the uttri like that. and they'll hold a danda also in the hand so they are the sanyasis and sanyasis are addressed as his holiness initiated devotees are addressed as his grace shriman her grace something like that so whenever we see a sanyasi immediately one should pay obeisances in fact shastras say even if you see a mayavadi sanyasi an offender to the lord but since he is a sanyasi we pay obeisances to even that person and if we fail to offer obeisance to a sanyasi shastra say that we should fast for okay fast for half a day pro is saying we'll accept fast for half a day <laughs> so one has to fast if you don't pay obeisances pro was writing a letter to a devotee called sudama this is 1972 29 july he says all should offer due respect to a sanyasi His position is always superior to all other inmates of the temple. He must always maintain that superior position by action and behavior. So, Prabhupada's direct instruction: You should pay obeisance to a sannyasi. As soon as you see a sannyasi, you should pay obeisance. And rest, whatever discuss about senior devotees, that's applicable to a sannyasi. Now, dealing with opposite gender, because in the association of devotees, naturally we'll have males and females. Once Tamal Krishna Maharaj was saying that uh, Prabhupad, how can we stay in this association with so many females? And if I'm not wrong, Prabhupad said, "Okay, you go to forest if you cannot. Uh, you go to Himalayas if you cannot stay here." So in our organization, we see that both Mataji's and Prabhuji's they are very much important. Both of them they preach. Both of them they do shastric study. Both of them they do various wonderful services. So there is no question. of uh, keeping separate or something like that but we have this etiquette you see so we leave space in between so prabhu ji will sit on one side mata ji will sit on other side but obviously you know there are some so called high class you know people high status people they say why this discrimination sometimes i don't understand are they spiritualist or we spiritualist because they are on looks like they are on soul platform we are on body platform <laughs> yes <laughs> So I was there in one place, and uh, they have that uh, free mixing and all that. And I was in class. One day, I was chipak chipak ke baat hai, you know, male and female and all that. And then uh, when someone told that no, you should sit separate. I was like, "Is this like an alien? Is it? You are telling something weird." So unfortunately, we are there in a place in the age of Kali, where such things are very normal. But in Iskand, Shla Prabhupad expects this to maintain distance between. Uh, the male and female between mataji and prabhuji in fact during prabhupad's time initially both male and female would come together and dance together i don't know what all dance steps they would be doing in front of prabhupad but with time as they spent more time in askan prabhupad taught them how to dance also all girls one circle all men another circle prabhupad taught even that how to dance how to stay separate and things like that So what are what are the different things that we are supposed to do? A woman should be given all respect 
particularly if she is a vaishnavi and addressed as such very very important prabhujis that we are supposed to address every single mata every female who comes to our center as mata ji even if they feel offended it's okay okay sometimes it happens during book distribution one of our devotee ayi vai boy he was saying mata ji book mata ji hogi teri maa <laughs> So outsiders might not understand all this, but we need to understand that yes, we need to address the females as matajis with respect, and especially for a brahmachari, it is given a brahmachari should see every woman as his mother. There is no question. Every single female, even if she is five year old or fifty year old, she is mother for him. And when it comes to a grastha, except one's own wife, every other female should be treated as one's own mother. That respect should be given. brahmachari should associate with matajis and mataji should associate with brahmacharis and or basically other other males in the community only so far as required to execute devotional service and no more so this is a very important etiquette that needs to be followed means always remember that the opposite gender is like fire and butter doesn't matter how great we are great devotees we are naturally in fire and butter come together there will be problem there will be problem therefore it's very important that mata ji should understand that how to deal with prabhu ji and prabhu ji should understand how to deal with mata ji there should be respectful dealings there should be respectful space distance between the two i had gone for a house program and there uh, i gave a class some new comers were there and then after the class they start serving prasadam i was standing at one place and then one lady came and then she came like this and then i went one step behind she is coming like this kahan jo then the wall came behind yes but are dur raho itne paas mein nahi kya zarurat hai and then the from far then she was asking question because outsiders might not know what is an etiquette how to deal with the opposite gender but we should know very well and keep distance and especially i tell all the leaders who are there especially bhakti vriksha leaders when you are dealing say you have male and you have a couple in your bhakti vriksha and uh, you as a bhakti vriksha leader when you're talking to a mata ji in your bhakti vriksha you have to be very very careful better to talk when the husband is there or better ask one's own wife that you talk to that mata ji and there's no question of talking in private there's no question whenever we are there in public yes we should speak in public whatever it is when we are speaking with the opposite gender all these different things are very very important because we are in the age of kali we never know when our mind will cheat us we never know therefore it's an instruction that is given in the shastra that one shouldn't sit with one's own mother sister or daughter in a solitary place on the same platform forget about someone else even with mother sister and daughter it is spoken that's how culprit the mind is dirty the mind is and finally one last section how to deal with others that is non devotees one should not allow non devotees to touch our feet if they insist on doing it and there is no other way to avoid it one can simply remember the predecessor acharyas and spiritual master and accept them and return the namaskar with folded hands just beg the lord you please accept the this uh, obeisance of this devotee and please bless i am nowhere qualified and obviously devotee it doesn't mean that devotee should go and touch the feet of another devotee we don't follow this in islam two categories of non devotees to the innocent we should be well wisher we should respect with respect we should try to enlighten them and give them association of a spiritual master but we should not take their association by engaging in activities that give them pleasure in life that is in materialistic activities Okay, if there are some people who are innocent. Okay, we go and help them. We preach to them, but there is no question of taking their association. We give them our association. We preach to them, but we don't hear them. Their materialistic activities, and we don't compromise on the principles of bhakti when we are preaching to newcomers. Very, very important. Now that person might say, "Roja, please come to my home. You know, today we'll have uh, food together," and say, you know, "He's a non-vegetarian or something like that." and he wants to serve you know something which is uh, prohibited for us so there's no question that you eat just because you want to satisfy that person no there's no question about that 
There is no question about hearing something that is not proper. Just because he is a newcomer and then he is sharing about the movie that he has watched last month or last week or yesterday. And you are like, yes, tell me what else happened. And what? Next time you go to the movie, you will take me too. You will tell the whole story. This is very important. We will get contaminated. That's the point I am making. And the ones who are atheists, just avoid them. There is no question to go and interact with them and uh, spoil our consciousness. But, you know, if we know how to preach to them, if you have some strategies and techniques, yes, we can. But if we don't know much, better not to go and deal with such people and spoil one's own consciousness. How to greet non-devotees? Prabhupada is writing a letter to Arundhati. This is 1969, June 16. And Prabhupada is saying, Regarding your second question about greeting karmis, if a karmi is a friend, you just greet him, Hare Krishna. With folded hands, touch your forehead. Hare Krishna. If the karmi is a superior relative to you, if he is equal, then you fold hands and then say Hare Krishna. If superior to you, then bow down to the ground and say Hare Krishna. That should be the etiquette in our society transactions. So this is how we are supposed to deal you know, with non-devotees. And one more point, if one encounters a person who is criticizing Guru, Vaishnavas or Shastras, what are we supposed to do? Yes, so this is the point that if we are strong enough to argue with them shastrically, we should and defeat the person. If we cannot, better leave the place. And we have one more thing that we can do, which Achyutra will share. Who? Who? <laughs> Give up your body or kill the other person. I think the second one is easy. <laughs> But anyways, in this manual, only two are given. Defeat them or leave the place. And finally, the last one, that is guest reception. How do we receive a guest to the temple? I think you people can only share. So say some newcomer comes to the temple. What do you do? <laughs> Come later. <laughs> so some new person is coming and you recognize that he's a newcomer and you are one of the responsible temple congregation. So, how will you receive that person? Okay, you welcome them. You speak some kind words. Hare Krishna, please come in. Give them a seat. And talk to them kind with some kind words. Ask them where they are from or whatever. And then what to do, Mataji? Okay. Yes. So, very respectfully ask them, please come. Please attend the Aarti. Would you like to chant Hare Krishna? We, te we teach your mantra meditation. Very, very effective. And you make the person sit and give the beads, teach them how to chant. And then uh, give them prasad. And develop some relationship, little bit at least, where next time the person will feel good. Whenever he comes, he'll search for you. Where is that? Where is that Mataji who's, who took me? Where is that Prabhu you know, who took me you know, to, uh, to the temple and gave me prasad and all that? In this way, this is very, very important you know, how to receive. And here it is said, proper reception of guest. A special duty of Grastha is if Grastha does not receive an unexpected guest warmly, no matter how he is, he commits a great offense, a great sin. Not only Grastha, however, but everyone in every ashram and Varna should properly receive guests. Maybe they are talking about devotees coming home, guests coming home. So Grastas have to receive them very nicely. The main elements in receiving guests are offering proper respect, Conveniences including food and water, a place to sit, kind words, any services for the comfort of the guest and a place to rest. Here it is also said, offering simple or elaborate worship depending on the level of the person. Giving gifts such as cloth, gold, money or grains. Previously people would give all this as gift. One should, at least here we can give mantra card as gift, Hare Krishna gift. Something we should give. One should respect elders, parents and teachers by rising from a sitting position. This is also very, very important etiquette. Because as soon as we start putting tilak, start wearing dhoti, kurta, sari, whatever, immediately people, they have their 
eyes wide wide open eyes on us how this person behaves and say some elderly person has come inside and we are just sitting still no we are not uh, getting up to receive the person that's not proper in fact i have personally seen even yesterday we were there in a house program so some elderly person came and he was struggling you know to uh, sit and uh, to stand or whatever so immediately a senior devotee who was speaking he stopped his class and he said please get him a chair and he stood up gave a chair then when the person sat even this devotee sat and start continued the class so very important one has to be very vigilant about these uh, things identify oneself by and offer obeisances worship and gifts are res- are reserved for the spiritual master so when we were so when we are worshiping or when we say that we are supposed to worship the guest especially for the spiritual master so in this way we have these different different ways of dealing with different different categories of people and these are different etiquettes when we follow these etiquettes one thing that takes place is there's a nice association a very very cooperative and a very loving association of devotees in the community the community will not break and all the devotees will stay united in the past time of prachetas and prachetas did 10000 years of tapasya under water and then mahavishnu appeared when lord appeared to give darshan at that time lord praised them saying i am very pleased by your cooperation he didn't say i am very pleased by your 10000 years of under water tapasya he said i am very pleased by your cooperation and shla prabhupada's direct instruction for all of us that every single devotee in iskon should cooperate with each other and stay in iskon and serve in iskon so when you follow these etiquettes all these things will naturally happen so i stop here thank you very much shla prabhupada ki jai